All right, so today we welcome, we're very excited to welcome woodworking master, rock climbing extraordinaire, Kyle Mills, who in his free time moonlights as a number one New York Times bestselling author. Uh, so thank you for joining us today, Kyle. Oh, it's a pleasure. And right, we want to, you know, we big news, you signed a three book contract extension. So we want to say congratulations. And uh, I speak, I'm pretty sure I speak for all the fans and say that this is well deserved. We're super excited for you to keep it going. Um, I just wanted to start off. So now that you're six books in and you'll soon at the end of this deal, you'll be at nine. You know, how do you feel about how this transition of taking over for Vince has gone? Um, now that you have, you know, a decent amount of experience with this novel and, you know, a ton of writing experience. Um, how has the first half of, you know, writing these Vince novels, you know, gone for you? Um, shockingly well. Uh, you know, I, when I started out, there were a lot of reasons maybe not to do this. I, I was really worried that fans wouldn't want the series continued. Um, and no matter what I did or, or how good the books were, anything that this was Vince's thing and, and that I would be kind of seen as a usurper. But that was not the case. I mean, people really loved this character and they loved Vince. They wanted to see his legacy continue. So that was overwhelming. I mean, I, I honestly kind of was, had steeled myself for a lot of hate now when the announcement came out that I'd be taking over and, and finishing The Survivor. And it was the opposite. I was just like overwhelmed with mail of people saying how much they wanted to see the Mitch Rapp character continue and Vince's legacy continue. So you know, I had a lot of people rooting for me, which is kind of the way to go in for, to something, not rooting against you. And... And I worked really hard to, to write The Survivor as, you know, very much in Vince's style. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted people to not know where his writing left off and mine started. What do you see as your path for the next three books? When you think about the writing process, do you, do you have any vague sense? I know you're an outliner, you know, the pantsers yeah. versus the... Uh, the plotters. I know you're a deep outliner. So do you, do you think ahead on this next three book arc that you're going to undertake? I do. Um, typically I would say no, almost the other than this is a one very long arc, you know, from American assassin to now total power. Um, and sometimes I think about maybe two books, but with the new three, I think you're going to probably see kind of a three book arc. Um, which is something I've never done before. And I mean, a fairly, a stronger arc uh, right. in the storyline. And that's going to track kind of the things that are going on in the United States right now. Um, you know, the politics of the United States and, and uh, the divisions inside the United States uh, and the changes in the world and our place in it. So it was kind of a, a question when I decided to do these things these three, at this point, I think as a thriller novelist, you can either kind of run from what's happening in the world because it's complicated, sometimes a little depressing, um, and kind of bring your focus in uh, on your character. And maybe, you know, I mean, the, the obvious thing is, you know, somebody, and I believe me, I think about this, somebody coming out of your character's past to kill them or something like that, and you can sort of ignore all the other things going on. Or you can really embrace it. Um, and I find politics and geopolitics to be really interesting. So I've decided to embrace it and we'll see how that goes <laughs> because obviously people are, you know, things are pretty polarized and you don't know how people are going to react to things, but right. I find what's going on in the world right now to be super interesting and what's going on in the United States right now. So we're going to dive into that and uh, see how things go. <laughs> But have you ever considered down the road going back in time? Would you ever like to try something new and fill in gaps in the past uh, from Rap's story? Similar how later in his career, Vince did go back to American Assassin, come up with the origin. Maybe not something that intense, but is there anywhere in the earlier Rap saga that you, you find you can plug in in the future? Yeah, I mean, exactly what you're talking about. I mean, certainly... Um, the arc that started with American Assassin went to Kill Shot and then disappeared. I mean, 
that it was pretty clear that Vince intended to go back to that at some point because I mean you I mean it just sort of ended. I mean we yeah. don't know what happened to Greta. We don't yeah. we don't know how he and Hurley became like really super close. They hated each other at the time. So there's a ton of stuff there. Uh you know between kill shot and uh and transfer power to to plumb there so i it would be really fun to do that um and maybe someday i'll convince people to to let me do it uh, we'll see well, the, uh, the fans can the fans really are behind cool. you yeah i think so i think a lot of the fans would be behind it um a lot of them ask for it so we'll see i mean i've believe me i've uh I, i've promoted it and uh and floated it by the powers that be because i think it'd be really fun to write i mean essentially that's historical you know it'd be a historical thriller that would have been like you know the, the late 80s early 90s so well right. this podcast is 100 percent behind you in that <laughs> effort <laughs> for what it's worth well, we'll we'll i think i'd be great i mean i'd love to like take a real something that really happened in the past and then plug mitch into it so you'd be mm. like this the normal history that everybody knows, but then Mitch behind the scenes, I think that'd be super fun. Wow. That would be cool. Wow. So speaking of your, your previous work and um, maybe other thriller series out there, you know, ra- uh, fans have clamored for this. If there were a crossover, how, uh, who would you want it to be? Because I think I know the answer for myself and for many fans out there. If you were to cross over uh, a previous character, you wrote another character in a thriller series. Who who do you think would be most fun to team wrap up with in a book? The obvious one with that, that people talk about all the time, fans talk about all the time with another author would be Scott Harbath. Sure. Which would be super fun. And Brad and I have talked about doing, I don't know, like a short story or something and then donating all the funds to charity or something. We've never gotten around to it. Uh, that would that would be really cool. Again, the fans and this podcast would be 100% <laughs> behind it <laughs> for the powers that be. <laughs> nice. Which sci-fi topic would be more likely to make it into one of your books? Time travel, space travel, or alien contact? Uh, I think space travel because, you know, you got the space force now. So maybe, you know, if it goes on long enough, it might be Mitch in space. Mitch, in, let's get <laughs> hashtag Mitch in space trending out there. <laughs> uh, well, in addition to pre-ordering Total Power before the release on September 15th, how else can our listeners keep up with all things Kyle Mills? Where can yeah, they find just, you? Uh, you know, you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Actually, I do Instagram a little bit now and then. And uh, my website, just kylemills.com. Um, there's email on there and stuff if you want to get in touch with me. Um, I read all my email and answer it. So um, just uh, I always like to hear from fans. Cool. Yeah, we, thank you for coming on. This is great. 